Hey guys, Hendry from Cape Carnivores here. So a question I get asked quite a lot is how do I feed or fertilize my carnivorous plants such as this here in the Penetis Tootles. So carnivorous plants, while very kind of weird and hungry, still require mineral nutrition like any other plant. So minerals are things such as your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, boron, etc, etc. There's quite a few of them. So these plants generally grow in very nutrient poor habitats such as in peaty soils, on rock, and various other substrates that really don't have a lot of nutrition available to them, which is why you often have to use nutrient-free substrates to use anything with fertilizer and it can often burn and kill them. So this creates a misconception that carnivorous plants don't want fertilizer at all, which I find is quite wrong. In general, if you have a few in the outside, they can catch plenty of insects to digest and acquire nutrients from. But if you have quite a lot, like I have here, in a shade house, it's closed off, you don't really have many insects available to feed them. So how do you get them the nutrition they need to really grow and thrive? You use fertilizers. So as a carnivorous plant grower, you have a few options available to you, such as organic fertilizers or chemical fertilizers. I'm more prone to using organic fertilizers. These are usually developed from various byproducts of waste, so this is fish emulsion, which is made from fish scraps. This is the organic super charger I'm using normally, which is actually as nice and pretty as a bottle looks, as made from blood and carcass meal. And then here, I have a chemical fertilizer, this is my orchid fertilizer. And you get other additives such as organic stimulants, so this is Kelpac, an organic seaweed concentrate. It's used mostly for orchids and for crops. I've tested it on the carnivorous plants. It's difficult to see sort of a strong effect, but it certainly is not harmful. So minerals are quite important for plants, for growth, for normal immune function, making seeds, for making good vegetative growth. So this here is an Nepenthes ventricosa across a Fipiata. And as you can see, it's quite well fed and it's growing very nicely. In Nepenthes, you can see good growth through these leaf jumps. So you can see just how big this leaf is compared to some of the older ones. And I feed these plants regularly, which allows them to grow very well. Conivorous plants typically don't show that many signs of nutrient deficiency. Nepenthes being some of the bigger, woodier plants are more prone to showing deficiencies than other conivorous plants. They're generally very good at recycling nutrients, so they don't need a lot to start off with. But if they're growing very big and quickly, you need a good supply of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and other minerals to maintain good growth and function. Nutrient deficient plants will be more vulnerable to pathogens and to pests, since minerals are important for making secondary metabolites. Various other compounds of plants produce for messaging, for immune response, for defense against pests, and many other factors. So feeding them well is critical for having good healthy plants. So as I mentioned, you've got two main groups of fertilizers, your organic fertilizers and your chemical fertilizers. So chemical fertilizers are very simple. They're chemical salts that you dissolve in water and feed your plants with. And like any fertilizer, I have the ratio of 613, which refers to the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, your NPK, in the mixture. So this is six parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, and three parts potassium, which this is just an orchid vegetative grow fertilizer, whereas this fish emulsion tends to be very rich in nitrogen. It's 93 grams nitrogen per kilogram, 13 grams of phosphorus, and 35 grams of potassium. I don't find the ratio to be particularly important. I think the organic supercharger is a similar ratio. And organic fertilizers are a bit different. As I mentioned, they're usually byproducts of organic waste. So this, all the nutrients are bound in organic compounds and various other organic factors. I don't know them super well, so don't quote me on this. But the difference is these are typically broken down by microbes or fungi, bacteria, other little guys in the soil, break it down and make it available to the plants nice and safely. Whereas these chemical fertilizers are available immediately as salts to be taken up by the plant. But that can be a bad thing because too much salt can lead to osmotic stress, which damages the plants. I've killed carnivorous plants by over delivering chemical fertilizers before. But I know in the United States you get products like Maxi which are chemical fertilizer based, but you dose them in very small doses and then your risk of damaging your plants is quite low. Whereas the organic fertilizers, they don't really have a charge to them since everything is bound up nicely and they have to be broken down first before it's available. So this is why I use these and how I use it is by feeding it to the plants. So if it's on a sundew, I feed it to the traps. If it's in an Nepenthes, I feed it to the pitchers. I've also root fed plants with it if they're too small, like the Nepenthe seedlings, Saracenia seedlings. And it works really well. You don't end up with chemical burns, you get very good growth. For the Nepenthes, it's also very nice because if you use chemical fertilizer, it can burn and brown the upper part of the pitchers, 
which is something I don't observe with this. So let me mix them up and show you how it works. So now that you have your organics fertilizer, I've added some to the, my five liter spray bottle. Give it a very good mix. Make sure it's properly dissolved. Make sure your bottle is pumped up. And if you come have a little closer look, I can show you how I do the feeding. So for Nepenthes, it's very simple. You take your pitcher and you spray. For these, I'll try and fill them as much as I can before they start wanting to tip over or fall over. As I mentioned, this isn't really salty at all, so it won't burn your pitchers. Pitcher burn usually happens now just more with age. So I'll take every pitcher on the plant and fill it up. Contrary to popular belief, I don't find that feeding the Nepenthes makes them pitcher less. If anything, it makes them pitcher a bit better. Some people think that if the plant has got enough nutrition from the pitchers, it'll stop making more. I find that to be a bit of an old wives' tale. These plants I feed about every two or three weeks, and they're pitchering miraculously even in a sort of not actual greenhouse without proper humidity. Now for sun use, I have a few over here. These Drosera venusa and Drosera cunifolia. I set my spray to be a very fine mist. And I just give them a gentle spray to cover the traps. You'll see they'll look very nice and dewy afterwards. So these sun use, they digest through the trichomes on the end of the leaves so you can see there's some nice fertilizer droplets on them now, and they'll digest it like they're dead, they digest normal prey. That's what makes this fertilizer so great, as it plays to the plant's existing stresses. On the other side, I have some butterworts, some pinguicula, and I do exactly the same thing. So you find the carnivorous part of the plant, which in this case is their sticky leaves, and just give them a little spray. Others over here, I'll give them a spray, give them a spray. If there's plants like the cephalotus here, and I don't really have traps that you could fill, I'll give a light spring around the plant, I'll drop some organic fertilizer in the root zone and since it has to be broken down before the plant gets a fertilizer it shouldn't burn them. This might make your soil break down a little faster but these guys you should be repotting about once a year anyway. Same for this darling Tonia here. I can't really get into the pitchers themselves since the opening is so small so I'll just give a good spray around the plant around the root zone. Saracenia types I find are very resilient to feeding. They don't really mind getting some root zone feeding a lot of the big Saracenia growers in the US are actually tray fertilized with chemical fertilizer. This is not something I'd recommend unless you're really on top of what you're doing. So it's a very fine line between feeding while and burning them. Big sun use like Drosera regia. Again, I just give them a good spray. You should see a feeding response in the next day or two when the leaves curl over. So this plant I like to feed pretty liberally since regia are known to be relatively heavy feeders due to their size. Now since it's making a flower stem, I want to make sure it has plenty of energy to keep going through summer. So lastly here I have a cephalotus. These also are fairly tolerant to root fertilizing, but if it has an open pitcher, I'll just try and fill it up like that. It doesn't burn the pitchers, just fill them up nicely and I find it really accelerates their growth. Because cephalotus are typically very slow growing, one of the slowest growing carnivorous plants in my experience. So giving them a good amount of fertilizer really helps. So thanks for joining me today guys, I hope you learned something about fertilizing your carnivorous plants. Have fun, let me know in the comments what works for you and maybe what doesn't so other people can learn. Anyway, happy growing!